This summer saw a new cricket tournament called The Hundred. The idea was that for many people, cricket can seem the most boring sport in the world. It goes on for days and days. You have no idea what is happening. And so to reach out to a new and perhaps younger audience, the powers that be decided that we need a new tournament. It needs to be all singing and dancing. It needs to be quick and fast and in your face. And so the hundred was created. And it did exactly what it said on the tin. There were a hundred balls per side. It was fast, it was furious. There were life bands, there were fireworks. It was, oh, this is exciting, this is great. And people came for a short period of time. They got what they wanted and they left. It was a tremendous success. I watched quite a few games during the summer. And reflecting on it, I'm a little bit sad because as I reflected upon it, it made me think about my faith and about Christianity. And it made me reflect that this past season of the pandemic has been a time when, as a church, we've not been able to gather. As Christians, we've not been able to gather. And so we've been separated and we've been isolated and we've had to go it alone far more often. And one of the things I think that has done for me and for others is that it has become easier for me just to look at my needs. And what is it that I need? What is it that I want? And I kind of feed myself in a it's all about me kind of faith. And as we're moving out of the pandemic, One of the things that I want to encourage myself with and all of us with is this idea that actually I'm not an island. I was never created to be on my own. The church was never created to be little dots of individuals here, there and everywhere. But the church was created to be a community. A community whose individuals didn't just look to its own needs, but it looked to the needs of others that it looked to bless and to encourage others and to draw others into that community. Hebrews chapter 10, starting at verse 24, we read these words. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. There is this encouragement for you and me to think about how can we spur one another on? How can we encourage one another? How can this not just be about me and what I want? So easily I fall into that trap. It's about all my needs and Jesus, you can do this for me and you can do that for me and I need your help here and I need your guidance here. And that's been important in the midst of this pandemic for us to keep our eyes fixed upon Jesus. And there is an element of our faith where Jesus says, come as you are, come and bring these things to me. That's important and that is right. But actually there's far more to it than just me and my needs and it all being about me. And I wanna encourage us in this new season to think about ways that we can spur one another on and encourage each other that we can kind of reunite again as a community, that we can know that this isn't just about me, but this is just about you and me caring for you and me caring for them and me caring for the person that doesn't yet know Jesus. Two things I want to encourage us to do. The first picks up on what was said in Hebrews. Let us not give up meeting together. I know that coming back to church and meeting on a Sunday or meeting in our activities has been something that some of some of us have grasped and have gone back into and are loving. I know that for some of us there is fear and I don't want to challenge you or to make you feel guilty at all. I think folks need to come back on a Sunday into our activities at the time and the pace that is right for them. But I suppose the people that I'm wanting to encourage to gather with us are maybe those that have got out of the habit of doing it. Maybe those that it isn't fear that is keeping you away. Maybe you filled that time with something else. Maybe you're not sure of the point in coming back to church. Oh, we're in masks, it's gonna be boring. I wanna encourage you 
that by coming back and being amongst us when you are ready will be one of the greatest and most encouraging things that you can do. That is, we gather to see others. That is, we gather to hear others sing, to hear others pray, to know I am not alone. But there is a group of people that have my back, that we are praying together, that we are united together, that we are in this together. I want to reiterate, if you're not able to come on a Sunday because you're self-isolating or because you're incredibly fearful, please do not feel I am saying you have to come to church. Please take your time and do not feel pressured. But if you've just got out of the habit or if you're just relying on watching our sermons online instead of coming along, please come back. We'd love to see you. We'd love for you to be part of that because that will spare us on, that will encourage us. And we hope and we pray that that will encourage you. Second thing I want to encourage us to do is to think of ways that we can encourage somebody else this week. Who could I type uh, an email to or phone or go and see or write a card to or get some flowers for or get some chocolates for? Who can I speak words that will encourage them, that will bless them and will just build them up who can I say go on keep on going for it I'm in this with you I've got your back I'm praying for you is there anything that I can be praying for you this week we all know that when we feel on our own we can feel insecure we can at times feel powerless we can feel what can I do to change the world but when we know somebody else has spoken words of encouragement and blessing over us when we know someone else has said go for it I've got your back I tell you, that is so powerful, that is so important. Who can you get in touch with this week and say, go for it? You know, life might be difficult, but I'm praying for you. I believe in you. I think you're great, and so does God. So let us encourage each other. The passage says, let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. Let's encourage one another one another let's go for it let's take our eyes off ourselves and say I'm yours God use me in your kingdom use me in this community use me amongst your church I want to spur others on that your kingdom may come in more and that lives may be changed 